Physical cosmology is the study of the largest scale structures and dynamics of the universe and is concerned with fundamental questions about its origin, structure, evolution, and ultimate fate. For most of human history, it was a branch of metaphysics and religion. Cosmology as a science originated with the Copernican principle, which implies that celestial bodies obey identical physical laws to those on Earth, and Newtonian mechanics, which first allowed us to understand those physical laws. Physical cosmology, as it is now understood, began with the development in 1915 of Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity, followed by major observational discoveries in the 1920s. First, Edwin Hubble discovered that the universe contains a huge number of external galaxies beyond our own Milky Way. Then, work by Vesta Slipher and others showed that the universe is expanding. These advances made it possible to speculate about the origin of the universe and allowed the establishment of the Big Bang Theory by Georges Lemaitre as the leading cosmological model. A few researchers still advocate a handful of alternative cosmologies, however, most cosmologists agree that the Big Bang Theory explains the observations better. Dramatic advances in observational cosmology since the 1990s, including the cosmic microwave background, distant supernovae and galaxy redshift surveys, have led to the development of a standard model of cosmology. This model requires the universe to contain large amounts of dark matter and dark energy whose nature is currently not well understood. But the model gives detailed predictions that are in excellent agreement with many diverse observations. Cosmology draws heavily on the work of many disparate areas of research in theoretical and applied physics. Areas relevant to cosmology include particle physics experiments and theory, theoretical and observational astrophysics, general relativity, quantum mechanics, and plasma physics. Subject History Modern cosmology developed along tandem tracks of theory and observation. In 1916, Albert Einstein published his theory of general relativity, which provided a unified description of gravity as a geometric property of space and time. At the time, Einstein believed in a static universe, but found that his original formulation of the theory did not permit it. This is because masses distributed throughout the universe gravitationally attract and move toward each other over time. However, he realized that his equations permitted the introduction of a constant term which could counteract the attractive force of gravity on the cosmic scale. Einstein published his first paper on relativistic cosmology in 1917, in which he added this cosmological constant to his field equations in order to force them to model a static universe. However, this so-called Einstein model is unstable to small perturbations, it will eventually start to expand or contract. The Einstein model describes a static universe, space is finite and unbounded. It was later realized that Einstein's model was just one of a larger set of possibilities, all of which were consistent with general relativity and the cosmological principle. The cosmological solutions of general relativity were found by Alexander Friedman in the early 1920s. His equations describe the friedman limiter robertson walker universe, which may expand or contract, and whose geometry may be open, flat, or closed. In the 1910s, Vesta Slipher interpreted the red shift of spiral nebulae as a Doppler shift that indicated they were receding from Earth. However, it is difficult to determine the distance to astronomical objects. One way is to compare the physical size of an object to its angular size, but a physical size must be assumed to do this. Another method is to measure the brightness of an object and assume an intrinsic luminosity, from which the distance may be determined using the inverse square law. Due to the difficulty of using these methods, they did not realize that the nebulae were actually galaxies outside our own Milky Way. 
nor did they speculate about the cosmological implications. In 1927, the Belgian Roman Catholic priest Georges Lemaitre independently derived the Friedman Lemaitre Robertson Walker equations and proposed, on the basis of the recession of spiral nebulae, that the universe began with the explosion of a primeval atom, which was later called the Big Bang. In 1929, Edwin Hubble provided an observational basis for Limater's theory. Hubble showed that the spiral nebulae were galaxies by determining their distances using measurements of the brightness of sapphite variable stars. He discovered a relationship between the redshift of a galaxy and its distance. He interpreted this as evidence that the galaxies are receding from Earth in every direction at speeds proportional to their distance. This fact is now known as Hubble's law. Though the numerical factor Hubble found relating recessional velocity and distance was off by a factor of 10, due to not knowing about the types of sapphite variables, Given the cosmological principle, Hubble's law suggested that the universe was expanding. Two primary explanations were proposed for the expansion. One was Limater's Big Bang Theory, advocated and developed by George Gamo. The other explanation was Fred Hoyle's steady-state model in which new matter is created as the galaxies move away from each other. In this model, the universe is roughly the same at any point in time. For a number of years, support for these theories was evenly divided. However, the observational evidence began to support the idea that the universe evolved from a hot, dense state. The discovery of the cosmic microwave background in 1965 lent strong support to the Big Bang model, and since the precise measurements of the cosmic microwave background by the Cosmic Background Explorer in the early 1990s, few cosmologists have seriously proposed other theories of the origin and evolution of the cosmos. One consequence of this is that in standard general relativity, the universe began with a singularity, as demonstrated by Roger Penrose and Stephen Hawking in the 1960s. An alternative view to extend the Big Bang model, suggesting the universe had no beginning or singularity and the age of the universe is infinite, has been presented. Energy of the Cosmos Light chemical elements, primarily hydrogen and helium, were created in the Big Bang process. The small atomic nuclei combined into larger atomic nuclei to form heavier elements such as iron and nickel, which are more stable. This caused a later energy release. Such reactions of nuclear particles inside stars continue to contribute to sudden energy releases, such as in nova stars. Gravitational collapse of matter into black holes is also thought to power the most energetic processes, generally seen at the centers of galaxies. Cosmologists cannot explain all cosmic phenomena exactly, such as those related to the accelerating expansion of the universe, using conventional forms of energy. Instead, cosmologists propose a new form of energy called dark energy that permeates all space. One hypothesis is that dark energy is the energy of virtual particles, which are believed to exist in a vacuum due to the uncertainty principle. There is no clear way to define the total energy in the universe using the most widely accepted theory of gravity, general relativity. Therefore, it remains controversial whether the total energy is conserved in an expanding universe. For instance, each photon that travels through intergalactic space loses energy due to the redshift effect. This energy is not obviously transferred to any other system, so seems to be permanently lost. On the other hand, some cosmologists insist that energy is conserved in some sense. This follows the law of conservation of energy. Thermodynamics of the universe is a field of study that explores which form of energy dominates the cosmos, relativistic particles which are referred to as radiation, or non-relativistic particles referred to as matter. Relativistic particles are particles whose rest mass is zero or negligible compared to their kinetic energy and so move at the speed of light or very close to it. Non-relativistic particles have much higher rest mass than their energy and so move much slower than the speed of light. 
As the universe expands, both matter and radiation in it become diluted. However, the energy densities of radiation and matter dilute at different rates. As a particular volume expands, mass energy density is changed only by the increase in volume. But the energy density of radiation is changed both by the increase in volume and by the increase in the wavelength of the photons that make it up. Thus the energy of radiation becomes a smaller part of the universe's total energy than that of matter as it expands. The very early universe is said to have been radiation dominated, and radiation controlled the deceleration of expansion. Later, as the average energy per photon becomes roughly 10 electron volts and lower, matter dictates the rate of deceleration and the universe is said to be matter dominated. The intermediate case is not treated well analytically. As the expansion of the universe continues, matter dilutes even further and the cosmological constant becomes dominant, leading to an acceleration in the universe's expansion. History of the Universe The history of the universe is a central issue in cosmology. The history of the universe is divided into different periods called epochs, according to the dominant forces and processes in each period. The standard cosmological model is known as the lambda CDM model. Equations of motion The equations of motion governing the universe as a whole are derived from general relativity with a small, positive cosmological constant. The solution is an expanding universe. Due to this expansion, the radiation and matter in the universe cool down and become diluted. At first, the expansion is slowed down by gravitation attracting the radiation and matter in the universe. However, as these become diluted, the cosmological constant becomes more dominant and the expansion of the universe starts to accelerate rather than decelerate. In our universe this happened billions of years ago. Particle physics in cosmology Particle physics is important to the behavior of the early universe. Because the early universe was so hot that the average energy density was very high. Because of this, scattering processes and decay of unstable particles are important in cosmology. As a rule of thumb, a scattering or a decay process is cosmologically important in a certain cosmological epoch if the timescale describing that process is smaller than, or comparable to, the timescale of the expansion of the universe. The time scale that describes the expansion of the universe is with being the Hubble constant, which itself actually varies with time. The expansion time scale is roughly equal to the age of the universe at that time. Timeline of the Big Bang observations suggest that the universe began around 13.8 billion years ago. Since then, the evolution of the universe has passed through three phases. The very early universe, which is still poorly understood, was the split second in which the universe was so hot that particles had energies higher than those currently accessible in particle accelerators on Earth. Therefore, while the basic features of this epoch have been worked out in the Big Bang theory, the details are largely based on educated guesses. Following this, in the early universe, the evolution of the universe proceeded according to known high-energy physics. This is when the first protons, electrons and neutrons formed, then nuclei and finally atoms. With the formation of neutral hydrogen, the cosmic microwave background was emitted. Finally, the epoch of structural formation began, when matter started to aggregate into the first stars and quasars, and ultimately galaxies. Clusters of galaxies and superclusters formed. The future of the universe is not yet firmly known, but according to the Lambda CDM model it will continue expanding forever.